Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of finite element analysis. I am solving the second question on finite difference method. Use FTM to solve the following differential equation. Compare the answer with exact solution at midpoint. So here it is said where I am supposed to calculate the value and check it. Use four subdivisions. The equation is given here. This is the domain of this variable x. Boundary conditions are given. I'll start. Just make sure that in the first problem I was solving y is a function of x. Here u is a function of x. So while solving just write the variable correctly. So I'll first write down this in the form of ui double dash minus 16ui plus 5xi square is equal to 0. This is my first equation that is given to me. Next I'll write down by fdm we know ui double dash is equal to ui plus 1 minus twice ui plus ui minus 1 upon h square. Now here again I am assuming the value of n is 4. So h is equal to b minus a upon n and n I am going to assume as 4. So b value is here 2 and a is here 0. So 2 minus 0 upon 4 which becomes 1 by 2. I will write down here n is equal to 4. This is assumed. I am assuming the number of intervals. Now when I substitute this 1 by 2 over here, so I will get therefore ui double dash is equal to ui plus 1 minus twice ui plus ui minus 1 upon 1 by 2 the whole square. 1 by 2 will become 1 by 4. So 4 goes to the numerator. So I have 4 ui plus 1 minus 8 ui plus 4 ui minus 1. This is ui double dash. I mark this as equation 2. I will substitute equation 2 in equation 1. When I substitute in this equation 1, this is ui double dash which I will substitute here and I will copy rest of the question. So I will have 4 ui plus 1 minus 8 ui plus 4 ui minus 1 minus 16 ui plus 5 xi square is equal to 0. Therefore, I will have 4 ui plus 1. This ui and ui term can be added. So, this becomes minus 24 ui plus 4 ui minus 1 is equal to 5 minus 5 xi square. I mark this as equation number 3. I am taking the xi term on the right hand side. So this becomes my equation. Now I will be solving for various iterations. Before that like in the previous problem I am again going to write down that I know my boundary conditions for u and for x. I know that when x is equal to 0 my value of u is 0. I also know that when x is equal to 2 my value of u is equal to 2. These are the boundary conditions given to me. Now, I will be assuming 4 intervals as I have told you. So, I will have x0, x1, x2, x3, x4. So, here if I divide by 4, my each value is 0.5. So, 0, 0 0.5, add 0 0.5 to it, add 0 0.5 to it and add 0 0.5 to it. So, here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 intervals. Correspondingly, this will be u0, u1 u2, u3 and u4. Value of u0 and u4 is known to me. These three are question mark. I need to find out these values. So I will be assuming three iterations. That is how I understand how many iterations I am supposed to take. Similarly, I have also calculated the interval based on the number which was given to me. Now it is told in the question that I am supposed to find the value at midpoint and check it with the exact solution. Now if you observe carefully midpoint is this value u2. So main answer is going to be this value of u2 at x2 is equal to 1. 
so now let's start over here when i substitute for i is equal to 1 this will become 4 u2 minus 24 u1 plus 4 u0 is equal to minus 5 x1 square now if you observe my value of x1 is 0 0.5 which i can substitute here and the value of u0 is also known as 0 to me so i can substitute these two values and i'll get minus 24 ui plus 4 u2 is equal to minus 5 into 0 0.5 square this is 0 so no point in writing that this will become 0 0.5 square so my equation turns out to be minus 24 u1 plus 4 u2 is equal to minus 1.25 i mark this as equation number 1 now i'll solve for i is equal to 2 for i equal to 2 when i substitute here i'll get therefore 4 u3 minus 24 u2 plus 4 u1 is equal to minus 5 into x2 square i is 2 if you look at the table x2 is 1 so i'll substitute here x2 as 1 rest of the three variables are unknown so i'll just keep it as it is 4 u1 minus 24 u2 plus 4 u3 is equal to 5 into 1 will be 5 so this is my equation number 2 next i'll solve for i is equal to 3 when i solve for i is equal to 3 and i substitute in this equation i'll get therefore 4 u4 minus 24 u3 plus 4 u2 is equal to minus 5 into x3 square when i look at the table again value of x3 is 1.5 which i can substitute here i can substitute the value of u4 that is 2 so this becomes therefore 8 minus 24 u3 plus 4 u2 is equal to minus 5 into 1.5 square so my equation turns out to be 4 u2 minus 24 u3 is equal to minus 19.25 this is my equation number 3 when i solve equation 1 2 and 3 i'll get the value of u1 u2 and u3 so i'll write down solving equations 1 2 and 3 i'll get u1 which is u at 0 0.5 as 0 0.114 u2 which is u at 1 will be 0 0.3713 and u3 which is u at 1.5 is 0 0.864 so these are the three values that i obtain these are the values that i obtain by finite difference method next i'll solve the same numerical by exact method this is the question t square u by dx square minus 16u plus 5x square is equal to 0 now first i am going to write down let d by dx is equal to capital d when i substitute here i will get d square u minus 16u is equal to minus 5x square i will take u common d square minus 16u is equal to minus 5x square let this be equation a i have to find u in terms of complementary function and particular integral let me mark this as equation p i want to find complementary function now that is uc for that i will just equate this equation d square minus 16 is equal to 0 therefore i get d square is equal to 16 which means i get the value of d as plus or minus 4 so i can say d is plus 4 and minus 4 which means the roots are real and unequal in such a case uc is c1 e raised to 4x plus c2 e raised to minus 4x so this is the value of uc this is equation c now i'll find the particular integral for this question that is up up is equal to 1 upon d square minus 16 into minus 5x square i'll take minus 16 common 
So what remains here is 1 minus d square by 16 and here I have minus 5 x square. These two negative sign will get cancelled out and the 5 can also be written together with 16. So 5 by 16 I have taken out. This term goes to the numerator. It becomes 1 minus d square by 16 inverse and here I have x square. Therefore, I will write down up is equal to 5 by 16. When I open this bracket, it is 1 plus d square by 16 plus more number of terms which I am not writing. It is not required. This will be multiplied here 5 by 16 plus here I will have 5 by 16 and this is 1 by 16 outside because this is a number. This is d square of x square. d square means two times I have to take the derivative of this term x square. The first derivative of x square will be 2x. When I take the second derivative of this term x square, it will become 2. That is derivative of this term. So, I am only going to get 2 over here. Now, you would have asked why I didn't take more terms because if I take more number of terms further, the derivative will only become 0, nothing more. So, there is no point in writing more derivative. It is enough if I write only 2 terms. Now, this decision depends on the question. So, the person solving the question has to look at the power of this term and decide as to how many terms you are going to take over here. Had this been x cube, I would have taken another term. Now, let's solve this. I get 5 by 16 plus 10 upon 256. Now, here there is one more term, x square, which has to be multiplied. This is my up equation d. I will substitute this equation c and d in equation b. Therefore, I will get u is equal to c1 e raised to 4x plus c2 e raised to minus 4x plus 5x square by 16 plus 10 upon 256. This becomes my entire equation. Let me mark this as equation e. Now, I am going to apply the boundary conditions to get the value of c1 and c2. In the question, it is given that u at 0 is 0 and u at 2 is 2. These are the two boundary conditions given to me. So, I will apply the first one. u at 0 is 0, which means at x equal to 0, u is equal to 0. This is the meaning of this boundary condition. So, when I substitute here, therefore, 0 is equal to c1 plus c2 plus 10 upon 256. Therefore, I can say c1 plus c2 is equal to minus 10 upon 256. This is my first equation. Next, I will apply another boundary condition. At x is equal to 2, u is equal to 2. So, if I substitute in the equation, I get left hand side is 2 is equal to c1 e raised to 4 into 2 plus c2 e raised to 4 into minus 4 into 2 plus 5 into 2 square by 16 plus 10 upon 256. Therefore, I will get c1 e raised to 8 plus c2 e raised to minus 8 and this becomes equal to 91 upon 128. This is my second equation. When I solve equation 1 and 2, I will get the value of c1 and c2. I get the value of c1 as 2.385 into 10 raised to minus 4 and c2 as minus 0 0.352. Now, I will substitute the value of c1 and c2 in this equation and I will find the value of u at 1. Therefore, I get u is equal to 2.385 into 10 raised to minus 4 e raised to 4x minus 0 0.352 e raised to minus 4x plus 5x square by 16 plus 10 upon 256. Therefore, u at 1, when I substitute x as 1, I will get the value as 0 0.358. So, when x is equal to 1, I get the value by FDM 
and by exact method. So these are the values that I obtained. You can see the value is close to the exact method, but it is more than the exact solution in this case. With this, I end the session. I hope you have understood the numerical. If you have any doubts, please write to me in the comment section. See you in the next session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.